Welcome to Alcamos Vista um, Estates and uh, today I want to show you water management approach that we've taken uh, here at Alcamos Vista. In front of us we have a series of tree pits which take uh, the first 15 mil of rainfall uh, from this particular road and actually treats it before it enters the um, um, stormwater system. Uh, now these particular tree pits have been designed to uh, um, passively irrigate uh, the eucalyptus maculatus uh, which we uh, have installed in these particular tree pits and uh, um, that leads to uh, um, uh, reduced I guess irrigation needs and uh, also uh, better vegetation outcomes. We uh, pick up that 15 mil of rainfall that sheets off the road, comes through to the tree pits, we get infiltration into the tree pit that treats the stormwater. Any larger events, um, greater than your 15 mil, bypass into the side entry pit located within the road. That side entry pit ties into the pit and pipe system, which discharges downstream into another series of rain gardens. What we're um, standing in here is a rain garden, which uh, ties into uh, the tree pits which we saw earlier. The uh, rainfall which goes into the side entry pit next to the tree pits runs through the pipe network and then bubbles up through the bubble up system located in this rain garden. That stormwater then fills up this rain garden and then infiltrates through the soil and also irrigates the native plants which are located in this rain garden and provides stormwater treatment. So it's removing the hydrocarbons and also the total suspended solids that are coming off the road network. For community education, where uh, we've provided signage uh, which looks at the different uh, water depths for different storm events, where we have the one in one year storm event which inundates this rain garden to a depth of half a metre. For the one in five year event, which is uh, slightly less frequent, uh, gets to a depth of 0.62 metres. And then for those very large and infrequent events, the one in 100 year event, the total depth in this rain garden is 1.2 metres. And so we've integrated the stormwater management into this lovely rain garden and park design. And for residents, it's a lovely feature, it provides habitat for local wildlife and also reduces the urban heat as well for this particular estate. Plant selection within your rain garden is a very important part of the process. With um, this particular rain garden we focused on West Australian and local native species and your, your species selection is, is very critical to ensure you get really good coverage, uh, that you have plants that are, are likely to survive. In a, in a very harsh environment. And we are very close to the coast here in, in this estate. Our plant selection uh, ranges from uh, Banksia species, and we have some beautiful examples of Banksia nivea, and, uh, and also uh, the coastal Banksias, and uh, also some really um, nice uh, ground covers. Some of the species that we've chosen are very suited to the coastal environment. In particular, uh, Spinifex longifolius, a grass which grows very well in a dune environment. It's well established uh, through this particular rain garden, it provides great coverage. One of the species that we uh, use in our rain gardens is the Banksia nivea. Banksia nivea is a very hardy and local species and provides wonderful coverage within the rain garden and uh, is well suited to this particular environment. Welcome to Picasso Park. This is downstream of the rain garden and the tree pits that we saw earlier. Now Picasso Park's been designed to be multifunctional and we've put a lot of effort into retaining the local native vegetation that was originally here prior to the estate going in. 
The multifunctionality of this particular public open space was achieved through clever design. We had to vary the depth criteria for large and infrequent events in order to be able to retain the beautiful vegetation which you see behind me. Now this vegetation is a threatened ecological community. It is Bankshire woodland and it's very important that we do the best we can to retain as much of this vegetation type within our urban form. We had to vary our depth criteria from 1.2 metres, which is what we typically apply to the 1 in 100 year flood depth, to a depth of about 1.8 metres where you see this vegetation. If we were to apply the 1.2 metre depth criterion right across the entire park, we would have to have filled in this particular location and we would have lost that lovely local native vegetation. In terms of safety, public access, ingress and egress out of the park, we've provided lovely gentle batter slopes so that people can walk in and walk out during a flood event. We've also provided signage which identifies how deep the water is and also integrated it into our active space. So we've integrated stormwater into this park but also achieved many other criteria as well and haven't compromised on the park's function or usability. Behind me there is an example of another rain garden which takes the overflow from the earlier rain garden that we saw and also the tree pits. That rain garden fills up to a depth of about half a metre and in those larger more infrequent events overtops the spillway located in the background. That spillway then gives rise to floodwaters which fill up the active space within this public open space. The active space is defined by the turf area which you can see. That turfed area has multiple functions and it's used for things like soccer, AFL and also community events and you can see the amphitheatre which has been constructed in the background. Also integrated into the park is passive recreation and nature play which encourages the kids within this estate to get outside and enjoy the outdoors. That nature play is integrated into remnant bushland which we've managed to retain through clever design. An important part of this park design is its smart technology features. Here we have an example of a smart bench which has a solar array which charges your mobile phone. So you can sit here, enjoy the park and charge your mobile at the same time. On lot stormwater management is an important part of the overall estate design. For example, the waterwise gardens form an important part of the house and land package and that's provided to each resident within this estate. Waterwise plants that are endemic to WA or a local are used in many of the planting pallets across the lots within Alcamos Vista. Also the on-lot stormwater management is done through soak wells. The soak wells retain all of the stormwater on site and any overflow bubbles up through the downpipe outlets and into the garden. So very little if any stormwater is discharged off the lots in this estate. Another important aspect of this estate is the use of sediment fencing to control the export of sand off-site into the road network and onto adjoining properties. And you can see in the background here an example of such fencing and how it's been applied and it's been very successful in stopping sand from migrating into this person's particular garden. This sediment fencing has been very effective in stopping sediments from entering the stormwater system and impacting on the rain gardens further downstream. 